imagined. They have used the pulpit and turned the gospel into gospel of millionaires. Once you accept Jesus, you become a millionaire. It's a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible didn't promise that. But the Bible promised blessing. And what is the blessing? Jesus taught us the prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. That is the blessing you need. That each day there will be food on your table. There will be sufficiency. But the preachers of our generation has turned the Bible into a money-making thing. It's not what God said. The Bible theme is redemption. Buying man back to God. But if you serve God in faith and obedience and submission, blessing. If the Bible, if salvation is the only way of making men millionaires, unbelievers will not be millionaires. The Dangotes, the all of them in the war. But it's a global thing, the struggle. And invested their money and drive their agenda. And they are succeeding financially. But it's not a good success. The task that God has given to his church is the task of preaching Jesus Christ each day of your life. And then it becomes a personal responsibility. That's why you find a task. The task and the responsibility. The task of the church become my personal responsibility. And because it's a responsibility, I am accountable and answerable the way I do it. That's why the song says, sowing in the morning, sowing in the noontime, sowing and not allowing even the breeze or the wind to quench your spirit. It's a duty, an obligation, a liability for which someone is held accountable. The preaching of the gospel of Christ. That's the success in life. It is an established and undisputable fact that love is the strength of every relationship. Where there is love, good thought flows. Where there is love, there will be no injury to that relationship. Where there is love, you respect each other's view. It is the love of Jesus Christ that brought us together. It is the love of Jesus Christ that brought redemption to the world. It is the same love in your heart that will motivate you, that will activate your faith, that will bring self down and enthrone sacrifice for the service of the kingdom. Otherwise, we cannot do it. Permit me to ask a question. Where do you take pleasure in investing your money? Is it not on things you love? Is it not on things you approve? Is it not on things you feel they are rewarding? Is it not on things you feel they will bring in resources? They will bring in joy? They will bring in benefits? They will bring in growth? Is it not where you invest your money? Where do you invest your strength? Jesus invested his strength, invested his useful strength in the redemption plan to draw you and I to heaven. Because you are the riches of the kingdom of God. Without you, there is nothing in the kingdom. It is an established fact that true servanthood, true servanthood is built in obedience and compliance to the instructions of the master. Studio, I wonder what you are doing. I don't know what you are doing there. I can't just understand what you are doing right now. It is an established fact that true servanthood is built on obedience and compliance to the instruction of the master. A man testified this morning 
35 of broken yet solidly invested his life, his intellect, everything he had to serve an institution that is earthly based. He invested his energy. There were times he was sick. There were times he felt cold. There was time he was disconnected. There was time he felt dizzy. But it's a commitment. There were responsibilities attached to the employment. He is accountable. He is answerable. In spite of the cold, in spite of the weakness, he said to himself, I must go to work. He looked at his wife and said, Darling, I am feeling cold, but I will go to work. Energy comes. Faith is activated. Love for the job. Love for what will come out of it. Love for what will accrue from it. Push him out. If there was nothing to gain, he said, Damn it, what will I gain? God has given you a responsibility that cannot be quantified by earthly well. The man with the gospel will stand where which is ah and said, Whom are you looking for? They say, Be like him, oh, not be him. Be like him, oh, not be him. In the day of Elisha, Elisha looked at 72,000 soldiers who were coming to arrest one man. And Elisha said to God, They don't need to see me. They don't need to understand who I am. They don't need to know my color. They come to him. Who we are looking? Whom are you looking for? Elisha. He said, Let me take you to where the man is. They followed him going. Seventy-five thousand soldiers. Follow one man. Not with a designer shoe. Follow one man. Not with a designer shoe. Follow one man without a tire on his neck. Follow one man without Queen's English. Follow one man who speaks only that language. A man haggard in nature. Follow one man. Why? The kingdom of God was in the heart. God was at work. They followed him. And as they go, when they go to Samaria, he said, Lord, there's something to do. Take away the cloth from their eyes. They open their eyes. Seventy-two, we are following like zombie. Following one man. Until they got there. Alas, my father, do I kill them? Shut up. You can't kill them. Did you conquer them in war? Give them food, let them eat. Give them food, let them eat. Give them water, let them drink. They will not come again. In the life of Elisha, Syrians never bombarded Israel again. Why? One man with the kingdom of God in his heart nah, 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 was speaking in favor of heaven. One man with the anointing from heaven disconnected the power of darkness and light shine in the darkness. They followed him. I say to you today, as long as Jesus lives, when the gospel is in your heart, when the gospel is in your mind, when the gospel is in your blood, Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God. Everybody shout power. It is the power of God unto him that believeth. First to the Jew. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Your English cannot drive away the demon. I had a story that somebody was counted to cast out the devil. He used all the English and all the nomenclature. Nothing happened. And the, the man who cannot speak, he said, get out. Come out for it for me. He said, devil, devil, you not go hear me. Devil, you go hear me now. Devil, come, come out for all the Come out, come out for this man. Come out from this man. The man broke down. Hey, the devil here come out. He didn't hear English language. Why? There was something in the heart. The gate of faith shall not prevail. Where you are, if the gospel is in your mouth, Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it, first to the Jews and to the Greeks. You are sons of God. You can't die that way. You can't keep quiet that way. If you keep quiet, they take it. Come on, hear me. You are back. You are you as bold as a lion. The gospel is your safety. The gospel is your deliverance. 
The gospel is your word. Go with the gospel. The door will open. Go with the gospel. The witch will bow. Go with the gospel. Your boss will bow. Go with the gospel. The kingdom of darkness will bow. Go with the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. How do I know Reverend Levi was a sinner? How do I know he lived in sin? How do I know that his power he was a sinner? How do I know he smoked cigarettes in life? How do I know when the power came things are different now? Something happened to me. If you see any man in the church including this one that is following our wife like he goes. He doesn't have Jesus. He may eat the Holy Communion. Jesus is not there. If you see a young girl who is sneaking by the corner, singing anywhere, he doesn't have Jesus. Don't be angry. Your anger cannot change. Mm -mm. The only change agent is the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God. You know what I'm talking about. The only answer to cyber crime, academic fraud, cultism and occultism, the gospel. The only answer Nigeria is looking for, no matter what the South change. Thank God for the noble idea. The, in his name there is faith for healing. Wherever you are, stand up. Do you know him? No other way. 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 for dying souls. You need to know the terror of hell. Apostle Paul said, knowing the terror will persuade men. You need to deliver passion, unrestrained, unlimited passion for the dying soul. You need to regard the death of Jesus Christ. He didn't die in vain. His shame is not in vain. The criminal charges upon him is not in vain. He died that we might live. He died that we might uh, advertise him. He died that we might give him to the world. And he said, go in my power. Go and preach me. I will confirm the world. Go, let them know me. If any man is not ashamed of me, I will not be ashamed of him in the presence of my father. Lift up your hand wherever you are. Everybody now, it's time for action. The next five minutes is time for action. Before we leave now, yes, in spiritual renewal. A spiritual renewal, a spiritual renewal. Oh, are you Lord? Everybody that was in you are. I need you at the altar now. I need you at the altar. Fifty men, fifty men.
stand and say to the Lord, make me, make me, make me, make me a generator. 50%. That say to God, make me a generator. Where I go, come out here. 50 men, God, make me a generator. Anywhere I go, people will hear my sound as I preach the gospel. Yes, thank you very much. No one ever cares for me.